Welcome to balancing. Oh wait, my pen's not working. Mrs. Baker is here with me. We're gonna do some fun stuff and that's a highlighter. Yikes. Hi guys. Balancing, you guys have all done this before. I'm sure you learned how to balance an equation in middle school. But if you think about where we've been, right now you know how to write formulas from names and names to formulas and now we've gotta figure out how to write them in a chemical sentence, which is our balanced equation. So we're gonna start with something super simple just to get the idea down. Something like hydrogen and oxygen, oxygen, <laughs> react to produce. I don't know why I'm writing so big, that's so <laughs> weird. Water, and Mrs. Baker's gonna write us a nice balanced equation for that. All right, so I'm gonna start out with hydrogen and I'm gonna write it like that. Oh, oh, oh do I need a, okay, hydrogen. Seven up. And, and I've got myself some oxygen and they're gonna produce my water. Now in English, some sentences are really boring if we don't put some adjectives in. Okay, so again, hydrogen, I know, is a gas. So I'm going to put in a state of matter next to my hydrogen. Oxygen is a gas. And water, oh my goodness, that's a liquid. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. I think you've broken the, broken the law of conservation of matter, Mrs. May. I think you're right, because we have two hydrogens to start, two oxygens to start, and oh, two hydrogens, but only one oxygen. So here's a problem. We have lost an oxygen somewhere. That can't happen. That can't happen. Can't happen. So we gotta fix that. So we, our whole point of looking at this is we've gotta write a sentence that's correct, and it's not correct right now. So we need to make sure that the number of each atom that we start with, we end up with that same number in there as well. And we can do that by using coefficients, which is a number we can put in front of that compound or element in order to balance it. So what are we going to do, Mrs. Baker? Wait, wait, wait. You mean I can't put a 2 on the outside of the water over here to get that to be O2? Oh, right. We can make this H2O2. Okay. Sure. Okay. And okay. that means that hydrogen and oxygen make hydrogen peroxide. Oh, That's not oh, 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 oh. It doesn't oh. do that. It actually makes <laughs> water. So no, we cannot absolutely, these little things, you guys, when we're talking about it in class, just vocabulary, those are subscripts. We never touch the subscripts. We could, however, touch the coefficients, the numbers in front. So we need a number in front or numbers in front to balance it. I know you guys have balanced this one in middle school. So I've got two hydrogens over here and two over here, so I'm pretty good there. But I've got two oxygens over here, so I need two oxygens in water, so I am going to put a two in front of it. So it must be balanced now, right? Yeah, because your oxygens, oh wait, you messed up your hydrogens though, Mrs. May. Oh, cool. Um, Let's see, wait. So now there's two hydrogens in water, but you got two waters. It looks like you got four hydrogens over there. So what if I go ahead and put a two over there? That gives me four hydrogens over there. Super, so I have four hydrogens here and two oxygens here and four hydrogens and this two carries all the way through. So two of these, two times two hydrogens, so four hydrogens and two oxygens. So yay, I, I did it right, yay me. Good job, Mrs. May. All right, couple of just descriptors. The things that react are fittingly called the reactants and the reactants react to produce. I bet I know. I bet you do. I bet they're products. They are. We'll go ahead and write in the products. All right. So though, that's the premise, premise behind it. We need to make sure that we follow the law of conservation of mass or matter. Same thing. We're not losing anything because now we are not losing anything. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through three examples with you um, in terms of balancing equations just so that you can see some examples and you should jot them down. So we'll start with this, this first example then is, I'm just gonna jot this down. A 
Of course, I'm sure you guys know what the names of each one of these things are because, oh, you're experts at it now. I thought when we wrote S's we were supposed to put the state of matter aqueous after them. Oh, what a good idea. Let's add states of matter to these. So this one is aqueous. Um, well, we're going to probably make these are probably all aqueous. Now. What in the <laughs> world does aqueous mean, Mrs. Baker? Oh, aqueous means dissolved in water. So anything could be dissolved in water. It doesn't have to just be an acid. I could take table salt and dissolve it in water and it would be AQ. So we're going to put all these. This is not required in balancing. This is just descriptive. All right, so what are we going to do first? Well, I see I've got calcium. Wow, look at all those oxygens that I have. Lots. I got I to gotta count all those oxygens up to be able to make sure I have them the same on both sides. I think I would hold off. If okay. there's something that's found like multiple times on each side, like oxygen, leave it till the end. And let's okay. balance everything else first okay. and then see what we can do. Okay. Well, I see that I've got three calciums on the reactant side, so I can just put a three coefficient in front of the calcium sulfate to get my calciums balanced. Ooh, that's super cool. Now I notice if you put a three here, then that means I've got three calciums, but it also means I have three sulfurs. Oh. So if I have three sulfurs, and there's no sulfurs over here, I'm gonna go back and this has sulfur in it, so I need to get three sulfurs on that side. Okay, all right, and so you said we were gonna leave oxygens for last, so what you did in my hydrogens, you gave me uh, three times two, you gave me six hydrogens, so I can easily make six hydrogens over here. Oh, that's supposed to be a two. Uh, okay, <laughs> so I got my six hydrogens over there. Okay, so what about our phosphorus? We haven't touched that. Okay, well that, give the, that gives me two of the phosphorus. If I look over on the other, the only place I see phosphorus over here, I see PO4, there's a phosphorus there. Oh, but I got a subscript of two on the outside. That means I've got two phosphoruses on that side as well. Right, so I've got three calciums, three calciums, two phosphoruses, two phosphoruses over here, three sulfurs, the hydrogens, are, let's check the oxygen. So over here, I'm just gonna write this out because there's so many. So there's eight oxygens here. Got it. And over here, three times four, I've got 12 oxygens over here. 20. So I got 20 total. Now on this side, let's check it out. So on this side, I've got three times four, I've got 12 oxygens over here. And in H3PO4, two times there were four of them originally, so I've got eight oxygens over there. Twenty. Hey, they're equal to each other, so we're done. Great. Awesome. Example two. Solid ammonium dichromate. <laughs> you see how I'm writing it in words? Oh. Could you imagine that we would be so mean as to give you something in words? Of course <laughs> we would. <laughs> Produces solid chromium three oxide nitrogen I'm, gas i'm figuring out the formulas in my head right now while you're doing that mrs may awesome and water vapor when heated all right write a balanced equation for that you might even pause the video for a moment and write some stuff down but we're gonna keep going. <laughs> All right, so Mrs. Baker, you got these formulas in okay, your head already? I do, I, and ammonium I know is a plus one ion, dichromate is a minus two ion, so I know that I need to put my ammonium ion with my dichromate ion. And then you did tell me that it was a solid, so I'm gonna go ahead and include that state of matter there. And then you say that it produces, so I guess there's only one reactant this time? Yeah, look at okay. that. And I'm going to say it produces solid chromium-3 oxide. And so I'm going to put a solid after that. It produces nitrogen gas. I remember nitrogen's a 7-up, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. It also produces some water for me. But you said water vapor. That means a gas, right? Correct. Okay. All right. Um, so, hey, you know what? Speaking of descriptors, it says when heated. You could put a little triangle by the arrow, and that actually means heat. Sometimes they put other things by the arrow, like you might see words above the arrow. That means that the reaction takes place in an acid, or maybe the reaction takes place in a base. So you can use other descriptors while you do that. So 
let's take a look at this and start balancing what we've got here. So I'm going to stay away from the oxygen again, again just because it occurs in a couple different places. So I'm going to start with the nitrogen. Does that work? Works for me. Okay, so I take a look at this and go, okay, I've got two of these nitrogens on this side. Oh, and I've got two here. So Great. I'm good. Yay! Awesome. I, I did, you, you get the next one. Okay, so the next thing I have is I've got myself uh, eight hydrogens. And when I look over on the other side, I only have two. So what I, all I need to do is if I put a four in front of that, that gives me my uh, eight hydrogens. Okay, so I'm going to do chromium. I've got two chromiums. Oh, and two chromiums. I'm done. Oh, you've got the easy ones. All right, I'll do oxygens. Uh, you got seven oxygens on the reactant side. Oh, I got oxygen in a couple places. I see I have three oxygens. Oh, sorry, you're oh. on highlighter. Sorry. So I got my three oxygens here, and I've got my four oxygens here. Oh, look, I got seven oxygens. Oh, look, we're done. Look, we only had to add one number. Now, incidentally, I didn't mention it, but if there's no number there, it's a one. It doesn't mean zero, of course. There is something there. You do not have to write the ones. It is not necessary, but you should know they are there. All right. Super easy. Last one. Oh, good. Let's do one more. All right. So ammonia reacts with oxygen to produce nitrogen monoxide and water. All right. I would stay away from those oxygens to start, I think. Okay. I'll balance the nitrogens. Oh, you're done already? I'm done. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to balance the hydrogens, and I have three on this side and two on the other. So, I mean, I, I can't turn those into each other, so I'm going to use my least common multiple. Here's a good math term, right? So I'm going to make it six. So I'm going to put two in front, so now I have six hydrogens, and then I'll put a three here because now I have six hydrogens. Oh, except I screwed up your nitrogen. Oh, so I got it. All right. So you gave me two nitrogens, so I Ooh, Oh, what did I just do? I'm messing with you. Oh. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a 2 in front of the nitrogen monoxide. All right. So now I'll do the oxygens, right? Okay. Okay. So nitrogens are balanced. Hydrogens are balanced. So I have two oxygens here and three here. I've got five. I need... Oh, no. I need mm. five here, but they come in pairs. Ooh. How do I get five? Well, mm. hmm, I could do two and a half or five halves. Well, yeah. Because that, that times two gives me five. So that's good, right? Yeah, except for we need to have our coefficients be whole numbers. Well, that's simple. We can get rid of the fraction. Let's okay. multiply everything by two. Oh, got it. All right. So if I do that, this becomes four ammonia plus five oxygens. I'm doubling everything. Gives you four nitrogen monoxide and six waters. It's okay to use this fraction if it helps, but you can't leave it that way. We've got to double it. And so now if we do it, did it right. I've got four nitrogens, four nitrogens, 12 hydrogens, 12 hydrogens, 10 oxygens, and four plus six is 10. We are done. Awesome. All right. See you in class.